Welcome to labmins.com in our lab video series on IPv6 and Cisco Router. You can find a complete list of IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. So from the previous video, we have already put in place some basic IPv6 interface configuration and we have our default route, our default router, R1 and R2 advertise itself, then being learned from the host and used as a default gateway. So in this video, we're going to look into the default route a little bit more and see if we can play around with the default route preference so the end host can prefer one default gateway over the other. And we're going to perform some failover testing as well. And we will be configuring some static routes for IPv6 as part of our default route testing. For our lab setup, we still have our R1, R2, and R3 that was carried over from the previous lab that has already been configured with uh, IP addresses on the VLAN as well as our Windows 7 test machine here. Now we have added router R5 that we connect to the router R1 and R2 over a point-to-point -point serial interface. And we're going to use the R5 loopback address 2015 as our test IP for our static routes and the default gateway. And I just want to remind you that this diagram is available for download on our website on the video page. So if you wish, you can download that and have the diagram in front of you throughout this lab. So let's start off with our Task number one, default route. So we are going to configure IPv6 addresses between R1, R2 to R5 across our point-to-point -point link, and then configure static route to point to R5 loopback zero, and there will be testing reachability from R3 and our Windows 7 PC. Okay, so let me bring up the switch console, start our configuration on R1, and the interface that's connected to R5 is 001. We'll give it IPv6 address of 2001 0015 1 64. And then we're going to configure IPv6 route pointing to R5 loopback address, which is 2015 slash 128, which is a host route in IPv6, pointing to the next top, which is R5, 2001.0.0.1.5.5. Okay, so that's configuration for R1. Now for R2, same thing with the serial 001, with the IPv6 address 2001.0.0.2.5.2 slash 64, and then IPv6 route 2001.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
over R2 as well, and it is. Now let's hop onto R3, and we're gonna do a test ping from there. Point 2001, five. And that's pingable. You do a trace route to 2001, five. And you can see it's using R2 as the default gateway. And if we do show IPv6 router default, you can see here, if you check the link local address of R2, the show IPv6 interface, it ends with 3398. And when you do show IPv6 router default, on R3, it's also using 3398, which is R2. And that's, as we saw, verified by the trace route over here. And let's now test from the Windows 7. And Windows 7 should also have gotten IP through the stateless auto config here. And if we ping, see it has, it knows default route or default gateway from R2 and R1. So ping 2001 5, and you see that it's pingable. And let's do a trace route 2001 5 as well. And here you can see the window PC is also using router 2 as a default gateway as it shows up on the first hop. Now that we have verified the reachability to R5 loopback interface from both R3 and Windows 7 test machine, let's move on now to our next task, number two, which is the default route preference. So as you can see that both of the R3 and uh, Windows 7 test machine are currently using R2 as the default gateway or preferred default gateway. What we're going to do is to adjust the default route preference so that R1 is always preferred as a default gateway. Okay, so on R3, let's do a debug IPv6 ND so we can watch the messages. On the Windows 7 machine, I'm going to launch Wireshark so we can capture some of the ICMP message as well and see how that might change. So start. I'm just going to have that run in the background. And also, I want to do route print. Just to make a note here that we have an equal matrix on the Windows 7 for both R1, uh, R2, which is the top one, and R1. Although, as we saw with the trace route, it was preferring R2 for the first hop. Okay, now on R1, we're going to adjust the default route or router preference. And that would be under the interface that's connected to VLAN 123. And the command is IPv6 ND here with the router preference. And by default, all routers would advertise medium. In this case, since we want R1 to be prefer, we're going to make it high. And then we can go back to R3. You can see as soon as you enter that command, let's see if we can stop Wireshark as well. Okay, stop, because I can see the route advertisement a message right here, but let's go back and take a look at R3 first. As soon as you enter that command, R1 immediately sent out a router advertisement, as you can see on R3 here, receive a RA from R1, and all of a sudden it selects R1 as a new default route and remove the old default route that points to R2, or router, default router. And then it went ahead and installed the R1 link local address as the next top for the default router. So now if you do show IPv6 router default, you can see here before we had R2 being a default router, and now we have R1 being our default router. If you do show IPv6, routers, and we can right here compare the preference that R3 is currently seeing, medium from R2 and high from R1. Now if we trace to 2015, just a router 5 loop back again, now the next top has become R1. Okay, so now let's go back to our Windows 7 machine and do another route print. Just again, just up arrow, there you go. And here, if you remember the metrics before there were equal, which was 261, and now that the Windows machine has learned the preference to be high for R1, the metric has been lower. If you're trying to do trace route just to prove. And you can see our Windows 7 is using R1 as the next hop as well. 
Now if we review the Wireshark capture that we have, we see it right here, a router advertisement. And if you look inside the ICMP packets and look at the flag, if you remember from our previous video, this flag right here was set to medium. And now you can see for R1 is currently set to high. You can recognize that it's the MAC address, the last four of the MAC address, or the link local address in this case that belongs to R1. Everything else stays pretty much the same. Okay, so now let's move on to test number three, now that we have R1 as our preferred default router. So test number three is uh, got to do with default route failover. So what we're gonna do is to force the failover and see what's gonna happen. You're gonna shut down the interface on R1. So on R1, we will shut down both LAN and the point-to-point -point zero interface. So fast zero zero, shut, and zero zero, we will shut that as well. And now on R3, if you try to trace it, one more time to 2015, you can, you can see the next top has now become R2. Okay, and if you do show IPv6, routers. Here R3 has no longer has R1 listed as a default or known routers. Okay? And since R2 is the only router that R3 is aware of currently, R2 has been selected by R3 to be the default router. Okay, so that's how the failover is achieved because R3 maintains the reachability to all of the neighbor. And as soon as it's detected that R1 is no longer reachable through the ICMP messages, then it will fall over to the next available router to be used as a default gateway. Okay, now on the Windows 7, we should be seeing the same behavior. So if you do another route print, here router 1 is no longer on its Windows 7 routing table. And if you trace you can see it's going back to using R2 as the next top, although it doesn't look quite right. So let's double check um, R1 real quick and make sure I shut down the right interface. All right, yep, that should have been 0, 1, shut. Yeah, it looks like I shut down the incorrect interface, it should have been 0, 0, 0, 1. And that's why we have a little asterisk here because as far as the R5 is concerned, that links to up. So R5, we have two default route pointing to VLAN 1, 2, 3 through uh, both R1 and R2. So I was trying to get back, but obviously this interface right here was already shut down. So now that interface shut down, we try the trace route one more time. As you can see, we now get the correct output with the two hops, although I'm not sure why the first one is asterisk here, because if you go to R5 and do show IPv6 route uh, static, you can see it's currently only pointing to R2. All right, so let's go back and bring up the interface and return that to the upstate. So no shut before we forget. So as we saw, the IPv6 has a somewhat default gateway redundancy mechanism built into the protocol. But now compared to the IPv4, you would have relied on the first hop redundancy protocol like HSRP or VRRP. Although HSRP is still available in IPv6, and we will look at that in a separate video, and you will see that there might be some benefit of using protocol like just RP over the default gateway failover or redundancy mechanisms. Okay, so that wraps up our video on IPv6 default preference and static routes. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.